Y'all say a little Jace. He's going to read the last part. Thank you for your cooperation. Starting on verse 17 up there, guys. Chapter 2, verse 17. And Jace, read the word for us. These were waterless springs and mist driven by a, spore, by a storm. For them the gloom of, of utter darkness has been, has been reserved. For speaking loud boasts of folly they, in, they entice. By sensual passions of the flesh, those who barely escape those barely escaping from those who live in error, they promise them freedom, but they them, themselves are slaves of corruption. For whatever overcomes a person, to that he is enslaved. For if after they have escaped their def defilements of the world that, through the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled in them, and overcome the last, wait, yeah, and overcome the last state has become worse for them than the first. <clears throat> For it would have been better for them never to have known the way of righteousness than after knowing it to turn back from the holy commandment delivered to them. What is the true what the true proverb says has happened to them? The dog returns to its own vomit, and the sow after washing herself returns to the wallow in her mire. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So take out your Bibles. Second Peter, 2 Peter chapter 2, 2 Peter chapter 2, Jace, thanks buddy for reading that, appreciate that. Second Peter chapter 2, yeah, all right, you got your notes, got your Bible out, you got your focus on, I hope so good, awesome. Help your neighbor because if you're sitting next to a friend, a true friend wants somebody to focus on the word and not be distracted. And if you're sitting by somebody who calls themselves your friend but they're distracting you, so glad you're here so I can let you know they're not your friend. So you can pray for them. And um, so just to let you know that. So, yeah, if your friend sitting next to you is helping you to focus, that's a true friend. If a friend next to you is sitting next to you, distracting you right now, they're not your friend. And I'm glad you know that now so that you can stray away from some of the stuff we're going to learn today. So before we dive in, let's pray together. Can we do that? Thank you guys for being here tonight. If you're our guest, thank you for being here. Uh, we're going to get into the Word. Let's pray. God, because your Word is so wonderful and true, life-giving and so joy-filling, of course the enemy is going to try to mess that up. God, help us tonight to realize that your message of your truth and your love and how you've designed us to be, how you've designed us to worship, that was created by you to give to you. Help us to know, though, Lord, that there's going to be false teachers who take that truth and they twist it just a little bit. Because, Lord, Help us to realize that they do that because they worship Satan, the father of lies. And help us, God, tonight, that if in this room we realize that in some ways we are part of the false teaching, that you would give us the ability to repent and turn to you and never turn back to the falseness again. Because I'm also thankful that in this word you give us a warning for even that. Lord, I'm also thankful that your word does not sugarcoat the truth. It, it hits it straight. And it, and it expects us to listen and be warned and also be encouraged because you're so good. God, you're so good. And your word is so good. Help us to know that. In Jesus' name, and all God's people said, amen. Tonight, you're going to be challenged with the following things. Watch out for and don't be a false teacher. Watch out for, write this down, and don't be a false teacher. Now listen to me closely, young men and young women. Watch out for means, students, 
you will, it is not an option, it's not a possibility, you will face false teaching and false teachers sometime in your life, if you haven't already. You hear me? You're going to come across people who will teach you false things about God and his word. You will. So because I'm telling you and God's word tells you you will, you need to be ready for it. In fact, you being here tonight is part of God preparing you for that event that's going to happen when you will be tempted to believe a lie about God, about you, about sin, about this world. You will be tempted to fall for false teaching. I'm even going to be so bold as, because, you know, we're not bashful about being bold here. Some of you tonight have already started to fall for it. And I'm glad you're here because you don't have to continue in it. You don't. And tonight can be the start of you realizing the truth of God and turning from whatever falseness you've been believing because I want to share this with you and write this down. Now, you hear me say this a lot. Repentance is not just turning from a sin that you're involved in, even though it is. Repentance is also turning from false beliefs that you have. To turn from something that's false or in error and going to what's right. Does that make sense? So it's as drastic as I have been in bad sin and I'm turning from that and I'm going to Jesus. But it's also wonderful enough to say, you know, I've been believing uh, that hell doesn't exist for a while because I've been watching it on TikTok because it sounds nicer. But now I realize hell is real and I'm going to believe what God says about eternal damnation as opposed to what this YouTuber has been saying about it. That's repentance. Did you catch that? And so, so that's, that's, that's a really big thing because uh, you're going to, and as we're teaching, you're going to probably remember, oh man, I remember somebody saying something about that. Like, like for instance, you know, maybe, maybe you start to believe that the evolutionary thing that you're learning in school, maybe that makes more sense. And you're starting to believe that, which makes you start to question this over here. But now tonight you realize, whoa, that's, that's anti what, that's, that's not what God has taught us. So you're repenting from believing the falseness or the lie. And now you're going to start going back. That's repentance. That's good. That's why repentance is wonderful, students. Does it make sense? And by the way, you change your mind about stuff all the time. You know that, right? It's good. It's called repentance. So what we're asking you to do is, is, is if there's something that comes across your mind or something that pops in your mind tonight that you realize, you realize you've started believing about God, yourself, the world, and sin, and it's false, you just say, okay, I'm not going to believe that anymore after tonight. Simple as that. Sometimes it's as simple as, okay, I'm not going to believe that anymore. You do know it's just as simple as, ha, huh, okay, I realize that's a lie. I'm not going to believe that anymore. It doesn't have to be some emotional, oh, what? No, it's just, I'm not going to believe that anymore. I'll start believing the truth. Sorry, sometimes I don't know what to say, so I make noise. Have you noticed that? Man, my wife tells me, say, honey, you know that when you get to the end of your words, you just start making noise. I'm like, yeah, but those noises mean something. <laughs> All right, so like that one right there. Here we go. Second Peter chapter 2. Watch out for and don't be a false teacher. And the second part is this. Students, some of you have become possibly false teachers teaching people about who you think God is. And you may not even know it. Because students, look at me real quick. Everybody in this room, you're teaching your friends, your brothers, your sisters. You're teaching people something about God just by the way you live, the way you sing, the way you study his word, the things you involve yourselves, the things you laugh at, the things you show your friends on your cell phone. You're teaching people. You're teaching people about who God is and who you think you are. You are. So you are teaching all the time. You're being taught and you're teaching. Congratulations. Welcome to the planet. That's how it works. All right. So 2 Peter chapter 2, verses 1 through 22. Let's look at the first part. Write this down. 
if you, this is, I'm, I'm, my daddy, I grew up on a farm, so we planted stuff and stuff grows. How many of you plant stuff and stuff grows at your house? How many of you like us now at, at the Strickland house, we plant stuff and it dies pretty much pretty quick. That's okay. We give it a shot and pff, it doesn't do it. All right. So, but the thing about sow and reap, this is a agricultural term that you see throughout scripture. And I don't know if I spelled reap correctly or not. Don't know. Is that the way you spell reap right there? All right. Thank you. <laughs> spell check. You either got spell check or you got Eric in the back. <clears throat> We're good. All right. So destructive heresies, meaning false teachings about God. That's what heresies are. Errors, intentional, listen to this. Heresy is when you intentionally teach a false thing about God. Like God says this and you teach something completely different when you know what God says about it and you teach something completely opposite. That's a heresy. It's a heresy. All right. Heretics go to hell. Unless Jesus saves them, then they go to heaven and their family, all right? And they don't, they're not heretics anymore. Pretty simple. But check this out. You sow destructive heresies. If you plant those, if you plant false teachings, if you plant those things, you are going to reap what? Destruction. If you plant false teachings about God, people, sin, this world, you will reap, meaning when that thing grows up and you go to pick, you're going to reap destruction. Look at this, though. You can flip it. If you sow truth, you will reap blessings. <laughs> Is that not awesome? Just, the, just flip the coin. If you sow destructive heresies, you're going to reap destruction. But if you sow truth, love, joy, all of those, you're going to reap. You're going to, you're going to pull in blessings and joy. And you're going to be one. You're going to be so helpful and encouraging to others. So let's look at verses 1 through 3. You ready? Chapter 2, 1 through 3. Oh, we got a good time. But false prophets also arose among the people. This is Peter, the apostle Peter, who church history says for the fact that he worshiped Jesus alone and stood by what he said and did not stray uh, for his faithful life, he was put to death. Church history says he was crucified upside down. Um, and so you remember last week, he was warned by, God, by Jesus that, that was, something like that was going to happen. So it wasn't a surprise. And we're really looking at Peter right now as he's pinning and working and writing this under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. He knows he's about to die. He knows it's coming. But he still wants to teach the word. <laughs> How about you? Are you so in love with God and his word that if you knew you were about to die because you're a Christian, you wouldn't get all caught up in like, oh, no, what am I going to do? Well, you'd be like, I'm just going to keep teaching, encouraging. <laughs> what are you going to do? I'm going to keep teaching the word. That's what I hope you do. So, But false prophets also arose among the people, just as there will be false teachers among you. So Peter's basically saying to this church, you got false teachers in your church. These people who will secretly bring in destructive heresies. One of them, look at it right here. Look at what God says through Peter. Even denying the master, denying Jesus. In some way, these people who were in that church were teaching something completely opposite and false about Jesus. Maybe they were teaching things like, oh, he's not really the son of God. He was just a, he was just a prophet. He was just a teacher. He was just a good teacher, but he wasn't God, y'all. Come on. By the way, that's a heresy that's being taught right now, that Jesus was just a man. Students, Jesus was the Son of God who put on flesh. He never stopped being divine. He was 100% God and 100% human at the same time on this earth. <laughs> So check this out. Who will secretly bring in destructive, meaning these heresies will destroy you. Believing and following these heresies will send you away from God. Even denying the master who bought them. Look at this. Even denying the master who bought them, bringing upon themselves swift what? Destruction. Verse 2. 
And many, this is Peter, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, so God's teaching this church, and many will follow their sensuality. Now, look at me real quick. Probably what's happening in this church is there are teachers who are literally teaching a false belief about, listen, sexuality. And they're abusing their position to take advantage of people in this way. Does that make sense? So, so these false teachers are not just teaching falsely. They're taking advantage of people with it for a purpose of what it looks like of sensuality. Meaning it been, they're, they're getting some kind of sensual kick out of it by taking advantage of the Christians in that church. And they're taking advantage of the way they get influence is by being a powerful teacher of false doctrine. They become the teachers that say, you know, you've heard this about Jesus, but I have something new for you. This is, this is what false, teach, false teachers do. They'll say, I know, I know you know what the Bible says, but I got, so, I got a word from the Lord that's completely different. You've never heard this. This is special. And by understanding this, then you're going to be in the in crowd. And what they're doing is they're using this to take advantage of people. So if you have somebody and you're around somebody who says, I have a special word from the Lord. I know the, and, but, and you say, but the Bible doesn't say that. I know, but he spoke to me specifically. And, and, and if you listen to this, then you're going to be, and you're going to know more than, you know, your parents and those traditional people that you follow at church. You see what I'm saying? Because can I let you in on a little favor? A little, little secret favor, a little favor. Can I let you in on a little secret one of the temptations that Satan is really good at getting over on us is he will say stuff like, you know, your parents, your family that go to church, you know, there's a different way to follow Jesus than the way they did it. And so you're supposed to rebel against that way of thinking. And, you know, when they come and they, they sit down with you and they try to teach you and help you, you're supposed to roll your eyes because, oh, touch. That is a lie from Satan that you and I buy all the time. When God says in his word, when your godly parents and grandparents start to teach and instruct you in the ways of the Lord, you and I are supposed to listen and be thankful. Listen and be thankful we have those people in our lives because I can point out people that I've had in this room who have none of those people in their life. When they go get in the car, they get cussed out. They get cussed out because they hung out in here a little longer singing and praying and their family jumps on their case because they don't really want, they just whatever. But some of you have parents that would try to help you when you're struggling or try to help you and encourage you in the word. Don't. So what you get to do is you get to say, God, thank you. I'm going to listen. Because it's a gift from the Lord. And many will follow their sensuality, verse 2, and because of them, the way of truth will be blasphemed. And in their greed, so you also see, they're also trying to get money out of people. And in their greed, not because they need money for the gospel spreading, but because they want to get rich. And I don't know if you know this, but some people, it, you could use teaching biblical spiritual things and you can manipulate people to give you all kinds of money. Happens every day. Some people say, you send in this money and you're going to get a special blessing. That's a false teacher. Don't follow it. And in their greed, they will exploit you with false words. This is what God says through Peter. Their condemnation from long ago is not idle. Meaning, When they think they're tricking you, they're never and have never tricked God. Their condemnation from long ago is not idle, and their destruction is not asleep. That's a part of Scripture when you read it. If you just breeze over it, you're like, yeah, whatever. No, no, no. That's the part of Scripture where you see the word destruction, you're like, whoa. Because what you find out about God right here is he doesn't play around with people who teach his word falsely. Listen to me. We worship a God who is not idle when it comes to people who intentionally teach his word wrongly. 
which means, student, if you intentionally try to distract or move some way, someone away from following Jesus, God does not deal idly with you because he's good. Because if he just acted like it was no big deal, he would not be good. He'd be a pushover. And I don't know if you realize this, God ain't no pushover. If you believe God is a pushover and he just is okay with everything, then you've believed a false teacher's teaching about God. Do you realize that? Like if you believe God's just going, oh, it's okay, man. Everybody's going to be, everybody's going to be saved. Everybody, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how you do it. Everybody, there's many ways to God. If you start to believe that, then you're believing a false teacher. See how tricky it is? So here it is. So basically when you realize you sow destructive heresies, you're going to reap what? Thank you. You're going to reap destruction. Look at number two. Remember, God has not taken evil lightly. This is when you start watching and hanging out in the Old Testament. If you want to see how God handles unrighteousness and evil behavior and evil lifestyles and people who teach falsely about God, you're going to see a few of them. I'm going to read real fast. If you're ready, say yes. Here we go. For if God did not spare angels, what? God did not even spare angels who rebelled against him. Start right there. Demons are angels. Those, whatever happened, whatever happened in times past with the angelic beings that God kicked out of heaven for their rebellion, I don't understand the whole story. I don't understand the history. I don't understand that war. They were kicked out of God. They were angels and they're demonic beings, but they're angels. And God did not even spare them So hear me, (laughs) it's pretty serious when there's a rebellion against God. For if God did not spare angels when they sinned, but cast them into where? Hell, and committed them to chains of gloomy darkness to be kept until judgment. If he did not spare the ancient world, but preserved Noah, Look at the grace of that, that he, he, he really, he went in and he chose Noah to continue the human race, which is awesome. But literally, students, you do realize that the teaching of Noah meant he saved Noah and his family, but he destroyed every other human being for their rebellion against him. Whoa. So if God did not spare the ancient world, but preserved Noah, a herald of righteousness with seven others, when he brought a flood, when God brought a flood upon the world of the ungodly, by the way, that's a teaching of God's word. When somebody says there was no flood, that's a false teaching. Flood upon the world of the ungodly, if by turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah to ashes, He condemned them to extinction, making them an example of what is going to happen to the, whoa. So when you read in the Old Testament about the events of Sodom and Gomorrah, how that, whatever that city was in their unrighteousness, their evil, their filthy, their sensuality, their perversion, their perverted sexual ethic, everything, you'll see that. You'll also see that what they wanted... They had no regard for God. What did God do? He saved a family and wiped out the entire city. Why? Because they were ungodly. Verse 7, and if he rescued... And if he rescued righteous Lot, that was that family he saved out of there, greatly distressed by the sensual conduct of the wicked, because Lot, basically we get a kind of a sneak peek into his mind, Lot lived in it and it, it messed, he didn't like it because he knew the truth. So check it out. He saved Lot, greatly distressed by the sensual conduct of the wicked. Look at verse 8. For as that righteous man lived among them day after day, he was tormented... He was tormenting his righteous soul over their lawless deeds that he saw and heard. Question, students. 
Are you distressed when you see the world around you dishonor God? I need to ask you that question. Listen to me. Do you feel distress and torment when you watch the world literally spit in God's face with the way they live, talk, the things they call entertainment, the way they treat? Does it turn your stomach? Students, if it does not, listen, if it does not turn our stomachs, we need to ask the Lord to break our heart for the sins of the world. Because here's what happens if we don't. You'll start to laugh at it. You'll start to think it's pretty entertaining. You'll start to consider what it would be like to just hang out there for a little bit. You know, it might make you really cool around a certain crowd. So asking God, here's the practical element, the application for that section. Do we need to ask God to help us to see how horrible the sin of the world is around us so that we are brokenhearted, so that we will cry out to God for your friends who hate God? When's the last time you had or heard a joke that was terrible or saw something or somebody showed you something and it was terrible. When was the last time it broke your heart and you went like, man, I can't, I can't listen to that? Or you turned away. And as you walked away, you said, oh, God, change their heart. Change their heart. Lord. They don't know what they're doing. Help them to see it. When's the last time we did that? Because Lot, even though when you read the story of Lot, there was some interesting stuff. But you find out that even though he was in Sodom and Gomorrah, he was brokenhearted by their evil. Look at verse 9. Then the Lord knows how to rescue the godly from trials. So when you live this way, God's going to take care of you. Look at this. And to keep the unrighteous under punishment until the day of judgment, and especially those. Look at this and especially those who indulge in the lust of defiling passions and despise authority. Whoa. Hang on. And especially those who indulge in the lust of defiling passions, meaning you get involved and you like the lust of the world, makes you feel good for some crazy reason, But then this one, and especially those who indulge in the lust of defiling passion, and even as what we might consider as simple as despising authority. Meaning, the false teachers, a false teacher doesn't want to listen to authority. Doesn't want to listen to an authority figure in their life give them instructions. Wow. Think about that. I've been guilty of that myself. So there's a mind change there. See what I'm saying? So like if students, if you're here tonight and you really struggle with authority, I'm glad you're here because I don't want you to be a false teacher and I don't want you to follow that anymore. You need to ask God to help you love godly authority in your life. In other words, tonight when you hear it from the godly authority, you want to say, okay, God, usually I act like it's no big deal or I don't like it or please leave me alone. But God, tonight, because I've repented of that, I'm going to say, thank you for telling me that. And thank you for being in my life. And you might even need to do this. Mom, dad, grandparent, teacher, I'm sorry that I don't listen to you. It's as simple as that. Remember, though, why, why do we do this? Remember, because by doing this, the blessing and the joy of the Lord is just abundant. But remember that, remember, God has not taken evil lightly. And students, I need to warn you, if you walk in rebellion of God, you will be destroyed. If you walk in rebellion of God, you will spend eternity. God's good. 
He's not a pushover. And he's made a way for you not to have that. That's the good news of the gospel. You see, listen to me as we finish the last two things. The good news of the gospel is the hell we deserve for those who believe in Jesus. Listen to this. He took it on himself. Picture this. You, picture this. Me deserving an eternity, listen to me, an eternity suffering for my sin that I committed against God. Totally my due. That's what I'm due. The wrath of God, the Bible calls it utter darkness, separation from God, fire, flames, whatever that is. All of that for eternity now. That is my payment for my sin against God. The gospel says that because Jesus turned my heart, opened my heart, and I put my faith in him alone, literally, this is what happened. On the cross, Jesus took my eternal hell torment, damnation on himself, swallowed it completely so I could be free. Did you catch that? So check this out. That's just my sin. My eternal hell-boundness. Jesus took it all on himself. Now picture this. You want to know how awesome Jesus is? How awesome the Son of God is? He took that for every single one of you. He took your eternal hell on himself, on the cross, swallowed it all up, paid it in full, which meant he experienced it completely, rose from the grave so that you could be free and never have to experience a part of it. And you don't want to worship him? I don't know what the problem is. You see what I'm saying? That's the gospel for those who believe in Jesus. And if you don't, he is ready to take your hell tonight and give you heaven for eternity. He's, that's why he came. Last two things I want you to see, because you need to know this. What are some characteristics you need to watch out for false teachers? 11 through 16. Here we go. Remember, passion and those who despise authority, bold and willful. Here are some characteristics of some false teachers, and you need to ask yourself, God, am I some of this? If I'm some of this, I don't want to do this anymore like this. Bold and willful, they do not tremble as they blaspheme the glorious ones. In other words, they don't care that they disrespect God. They, they laugh it off. In fact, they might even laugh at people who do respect and love the Lord. Whereas angels, though greater and mightier, might and power, do not pronounce a blasphemous judgment against them before the Lord. But these, like irrational animals, these false teachers, like irrational animals, creatures of instinct, meaning they do what they feel. Did you hear what I said? These are people who always do what they feel at the moment. They're ruled by their feelings. Did you hear what I said? If we are ruled by our feelings, you're really close to being a false teacher. If you ever hear this, just do what your heart says. That's a false teaching. Don't follow that stupid thing. What do I do? Just follow your heart. That's dumb. Did you? Literally, I just destroyed half the love stories you've been reading about. Am I true or false? Because, I mean, seriously, like, you'll go home and watch it and be like, oh, I don't know what to do with so-and-so. And And you'll he'll put hand on the show, quiet music in the back, you know, oh, it's sweet. And I go, what's your heart telling you to do? That is a false teaching. Don't ever, students, can I help you with a secret? If somebody asks you what they should do about a relationship or a situation, please don't ever tell them to do what their heart, what, tell, do whatever your gut tells you to do. My gut's going to throw up all over you if you tell me that to do that. Okay, did I? Because, and here's what I want you to do. When you're watching whatever in the next couple of days and you hear it, you need to go like, <laughs> and then everybody in the room is going to be like, what, what? You can be like, that's a false teaching. And you will literally drop some Jesus on the living room in that house. Just drop some Jesus on them, man. Just like, that's some false teaching right there. It's so good. 
No, don't follow your gut and your feelings. Follow the word of God and your gut and feelings will line up with him every time. Does that make sense? It's true. I just destroyed Disney in like one sentence. All right. <laughs> Sorry. Oh boy. All right, next. Y'all, y'all missed my Mickey Mouse. All right. Oh man, this is good. There's so much here. So in 11 through 16, I want you to spend some time looking at and asking yourself this question. Who am I listening to that teaches some of this false stuff? And what am I actually teaching when it comes to this? Because the reason I, just go back for a second. The reason you should not tell somebody to follow their heart is because the Bible teaches us that our heart is wicked. Apart from God, our heart is wicked. So what you're telling somebody to do is follow the first wicked thing that comes to their mind. That is the, it's pretty stupid. But we do it all the time. True? True? All right. Next part right here. Then we're going to move up. We're going to wrap it up. Y'all are doing so good. Dogs and pigs. Period. Let me explain. Here is the amazing, shh, here is, here is, you can walk out today and when your mom, dad, grandparent, uncle, big brother, big sister picks you up and they say, what'd you learn today? Here it is. Don't be a dog or a pig. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Shh. Let's see. Let's see. Verse 17. Shh. Don't be a dog or a pig. What are you talking about? Well, Jace read it. So here we go. These are waterless springs and mist driven by the storm. I'm going to read fast. Read with me from the word. For them, the gloom of utter darkness has been reserved. For speaking loud boast of folly, these false teachers, they entice by sensual passions. They look really appealing to people. Of the flesh, those who are barely escaping from those who live in error. Verse 19. They promise them freedom. Freedom from that old religious way. You know, that old bondage of making, you know, you have to go and do this and don't do this. Don't you want to be free from that? That's what they're preaching. They promise them freedom, but they themselves are slaves of corruption. Stay with me. Stay with me. For whatever overcomes a person, to that he is enslaved. Did you see that? Whatever overcomes you, students can enslave you. That's right. Amen. Verse 20. For if after they have escaped the defilement of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior, look at this, Jesus Christ, they are again entangled in them and overcome. The last state has become worse for them than the first. For it would have been better for them never to have known the way of righteousness than after knowing it then after knowing it, to turn back from the holy commandment delivered to them. For it, for the, for the true proverb says, has happened to them. The dog returns to its vomit. And the pig, after it's been cleansed, goes back and wallers in the mud. Literally, here it is. When you know the true teaching of God's word, you walk in it. And when you hear the false teaching, you don't walk in that. Because if you have listened and know and hear the truth of God's word, listen to me closely. This is, this is, this is the Scooby-Doo section. Listen, here it is. Listen closely. Shh. If you know and learn about how good Jesus is, you know the gospel. You know the truth about false teaching and that you shouldn't do this. And you go ahead and you start to think and, all right, I'm starting to get this. And then you go back to the false teaching. It says it's worse for you than if you never knew. Did you hear that? So listen to me right now. In this room, it can be glorious for you because you've given your life to Jesus and you're going to follow him for the rest of your life no matter what. Or students, listen to me. Some of you in this room, it's going to go worse for you because you're in this room. Because you're hearing the truth, you're knowing the truth, and you, you, I'm, I'm begging you not to, but some of you will be tempted to go back to the vomit, back to the mud. 
and it's going to be worse for you because you did. Don't do it. Don't be a dog and don't be a pig. Be a child of God that walks with him forever because it's the best way. And listen, teach your friends to do that. Be a good teacher, not a false teacher. Because you're going to have friends who are going to try to walk off the reservation. You'd be like, where are you going, dude? Get back over here. I'm serious. So what do we do? I want you to look. There's a... How do we need to handle false teachers? I want you to watch this quick video. We only got about three or four more minutes, and then we're going to pray and go not be false teachers. Does that make sense? So hang with me. How do we, or how do we need to handle false teachers in our lives? Stay with me. Everybody with me? Get ready. It's going to be a video. Check this out. Matthew 18, and then we're going to close. If your brother, I think it's up here. Yeah. If your brother or sister sins against you, and you can put this in the context of even teaching false doctrine, sins against you, go and tell him or her, his or her fault. Between you and him alone, if he or she listens to you, you have gained a brother or sister. How do you deal with somebody who's teaching falsely or doing something in sin or have treated you in an ungodly way? This is how you do it. This is what Jesus said. Check this out. But if he or she does not listen to you, you don't just stop. What do you do? Take one or two others along with you that every charge may be established by the evidence of two or three witnesses. So after you go and talk with somebody, they just don't budge. They're like, no, I'm all good. Ask some other godly folks to go with you. Now check this out. What if they still don't listen? If he or she refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church, meaning some godly pastors, some men of God in the church. That's when you take it to them. And look what happens. And if he refuses to listen even to the church leaders, ooh, let him be to you as a Gentile or a tax collector. Truly I say to you, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again I say to you, if two or three agree on earth about anything they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where there are two or three gathered in my name, there I am among them. How do you deal with false teachers or people who have sinned against you? You go and talk with them and try to get them to follow Jesus. They don't listen. Grab two or three people who are sensible. Sit down with that person and say, this is the thing. If they still don't listen, then you go grab a pastor. This, basically what you're dealing with is somebody who's teaching the word or a Christian. You go get a pastor of a church and you say, we got to sit down because I want, it's not that you're trying to win an argument, you're trying to win a brother or sister. And if they still don't listen, you're supposed to separate yourself from them as though they didn't know God at all. Whoa. And then you get to this last verse that I really like that I think sometimes is taught out of context. This verse where it says, where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am among them. That doesn't mean when we gather to worship Jesus, God is among us. That verse, when it's used, is talking about when this situation is happening, when you gather to try to win someone back to the Lord, God says, I'm going with you. That's awesome. And so students, watch out for and don't be a false teacher. Let's pray. Let's pray. So right there where you are, if you need, if already God is helping you to change your mind and repent of a false belief or a sin, just do it. Just tell him thank you for showing you and tell him, God, I'm going to follow you. If you're here tonight and you want to put your faith in Jesus and what he did on the cross for you, taking your hell and putting all your faith in him alone for salvation so you can have eternal life, put it in me. It basically says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is the Son of God, God rose him from the dead, you will be saved. 
Isn't that crazy? It's awesome. Just with your mouth, confess it. God, I believe in you. Jesus, I believe in you, who you are, what you did, and who you are right now. God, I thank you that you, God, are the true teacher, and you've given us your word to teach us. Help us to live it. And Lord, when we don't, help us to live it as we repent of our sin and believe in you again. Because you teach us to do that. Father, I also pray that some of our students in this room might need to have a conversation with somebody tonight or tomorrow. I pray they would do it in love in order to win a brother or sister so that you would be glorified. But God, I thank you that in even a hard situation like this, you tell us you're with us. God, we love you so much. In Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. Love you.